got that kokanee slime, that fresh kokanee slime. Dude, you remember. This ain't salmon, bud. That just literally doubled our catch. See that Dodger skiing him on the surface? We've got a double. Oh, we've got a double. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Okay, guys, there it is, removed from the smoker. Hey, morning addicts. Welcome to another Addicted Fishing episode. Sitting out here on the lake. Uh, it's very cold, it's very wet. I'm kind of questioning why, why the heck I'm here today, but actually I'm here to film an episode for you guys. Our goal today is I got my son Layden, his buddy Riley, cameraman Alex, and the goal is to catch some kokanee because I've kind of caught wind of a really awesome, uh, different way to smoke and make kokanee candy. So, you know, we need about 10 fish. We're gonna get out here, we're gonna, we're gonna give it a shot. I've got some technique stuff I wanna show you guys for targeting these fish in the winter. And honestly, like, I don't know how it's gonna go. So you never know with these episodes, but hopefully we can pull it out. Had to run clear down the lake. Got the heater on. I don't know what else to say other than we're gonna get some lines in the water and I'll show you guys what we're gonna do next. Now before you guys, we started filming down here in the intro, I actually made a stop on one part of the lake just to check the temperature and just to check the water clarity because for winter kokanee, you need to have the clearest water you can find in the lake, whether it's at the top of the lake where it's flowing out or uh, excuse me, the top of the lake where it's flowing in or the dam where it's pushing out. So I uh, didn't really like where we stopped and looked. So we came down here um, and honestly, this is kind of as far as we can go on the lake. So we're giving it a shot. But one thing we're going to do is we're going to be using our side imaging electronics and we're going to really be making sure that we're trying to see the kokanee off to the sides of the boat because this time of year they tend to school up in very big packs, very concentrated packs. They're not, not like in the spring and summer where they kind of broadcast out. So you really need to be finding marks on your finder. And one thing for you guys, um, I know this episode is going to be out before the Washington Sportsman Show of 2024 and the Pacific Northwest Sportsman Show of 2024. I'll actually be doing seminars on electronics, showing you how to utilize your electronics for salmon, kokanee, trout, steelhead fishing in the Pacific Northwest. So, um, you know, we're gonna do some shots of that today, kind of do some overview, but if you're interested in any of those seminars, check them out. The Puyallup Show, which is the Washington Sportsman Show, um, goes from January 31st to February 3rd, and then the Pacific Northwest Sportsman Show starts on February 14th and goes till the 19th. Of course, we have our bashes and our movie that is gonna be there as well. When we went over to Steelhead Alley in PA and ended up hooking hundreds of Steelhead. So I've talked enough, we gotta get rods out. Fish, fish, guys, get it, lady, get it. I need guys on these fish. No, 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 take it out of the holder. And go easy, don't take your time with it. Slow. The key with the kokanee. Dude, you remember. This ain't salmon, bud. The key with kokanee is when they're fighting, you let that rod be the shock absorber and you don't even reel much. And then the second you feel them let off, then you start working them in. You gotta work them in. This ain't bass fishing, bro. First kokanee of the day, you know what happens if you lose it? In the water, Riley. <laughs> First kokanee of the year. Oh, that's a nice fat one. He's barely hooked though, I can tell you that much. All right, go easy. Come on. We gotta do a smoking episode. We got him. Ooh, that's a fat one. That's a small one. Dude, they're gonna be nice size this year, I think. 
I wonder why. Oh, there's Riley, 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 here you go, buddy. Here you go, just hold on to him for a minute. Don't reel until he's not pulling too hard. There you go. Hold the rod to the right. There you go. There you go. So when they're fighting hard, you don't want to reel. That's why the rod's designed to be the shock absorber. Kind of let him do his thing, and then, because there's no time in a Kokanee's life that he fights as hard as the moment he's hooked. And everyone loves to pick up the rod, just start reeling or reeling in the rod holder like that. Just pick it up, be the shock absorber, become one with the fish, and then tease him in. He's not fighting too hard now, and what happens is eventually, too, they'll like kind of ski up. I mean, it's fun to enjoy the fight. You don't want to rip him in, because they do fight real hard for their size, but like I said, you do that reel and like right when you pick up the rod, you are just bound to lose way, way more of them. See that Dodger skiing him on the surface? Okay, here we go. Keep working, keep reeling, keep reeling, buddy. Reel, 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 reel. You got him. You got him, bro. You got him. A little smaller one than that other one, but it's wintertime kokanee fishing. He's still pretty, he's kind of the normal fish. Yeah, that's a real, I mean, just absolute stunner. Okay, so we've got a few fish in the box and you know, we're still kind of looking for those schools, man. We're just picking up kind of one here, one there, but it's been quite a slow morning. So we're just covering ground. We're gonna keep looking for them, but I'm gonna take a moment to show you guys the rod reel gear because we read your guys' comments. A lot of times, if we don't do this in the videos, you guys are asking like what we're doing and we're more than willing to show you guys. So um, one thing uh, when it comes to kokanee fishing, um, I always start with like a small like line counter reel. This is the Akuma convectors and what these do is having the line counters when you're putting all these lines out they're really important because um, if you kind of stagger them too much and you start making turns they'll start like catching each other and for this type of fishing on the surface what we're hopefully going to do is run into a school of fish and when we run into a school if I have all the rods out at the same distance what will end up happening is I'll, instead of just catching one fish out of the school I'm hopefully going to catch four or five at a time out of the school and hasn't happened yet stay tuned but the reality is is the only way you're going to do that is to have a line counter that's accurate when you're putting all the lines out and keeping all your stuff together secondly i use a braided line and i know it kind of seems a little counterproductive for kokanee fishing because it's a no stretch line but having this thin braided line when i'm fishing downriggers or when i'm running on the surface the, the line tracks better in the water and it keeps the stuff from like not tangling. If you have thicker diameter monofilaments, they kind of act a little bit different. And for whatever reason, I don't tangle as much and the line's durable. So when you get into big kokanee bites and you have stuff going on, the lines are getting stepped on, things are happening, you just get less break offs, honestly. So it's durable line, it's gonna last forever. And um, on some of my side rods here, I've got like the high visibility line so I can see it. I do put a little, 10 foot bumper of fluorocarbon just off of the braided line but honestly I'll, for a lot of years guys I would just take that braided line and run it right to the front of my dodger and the kokanee the way they're approaching the gear they don't care like they really don't so um, a light braided line you get that durability you get less tangles it's easier to fish and it seems to keep everything spread out so then when it comes to the rod and I think the rod is like one of the most important aspects of this setup because you know you don't necessarily have to have a line counter reel you can use spinning you don't need to have braided line but the rod is really important because believe it or not you when you go kokanee fishing you don't want to have the lightest rod that bends all the way to the handle and is practically a, a whip that you can crack right the reality is with any fishing there's one thing that keeps fish on the hooks and that is tension and kokanee tend to fight really aggressively when they bite they fight real hard, they shake their head real hard. If you lose tension and you have slack line, you know, you might lose fish from pulling hooks out of, or excuse me, you might lose fish from pulling hooks out of their mouth, but you're also gonna lose fish from fish shaking the gear and throwing the hooks out of their mouth as well, and especially ones that aren't hooked well enough. You know, the fishery has really transitioned over the last few years to using these like heavier dodgers that drag a little more on the water. So having something that is just the rod that is just basically being overpowered by the gear before you even get a fish on doesn't make much sense. You want to keep tension. You need to have a little bit of meat. Now I'm not saying come out here with a heavy salmon rod, but these kokanee black rods were purposely designed for using these larger dodgers, especially for when we're doing top lining, adding a little bit of lead, and we even they even fish very well in a downrigger. So kokanee black rods in the seven and a half to eight foot 
uh, for your back rods and then I have nine foots for the sides just to get them out just a little bit further for when I'm top lining on the lake. Okay guys, on to the setup. Like I talked about earlier, Brad's Kokanee Dodger. This is just the Moon Jelly UV right here with a chrome back. Um, I do tend to prefer the little wider Dodgers. They tend to work very good at certain, at, at lots of different speeds, excuse me, but I'm generally trying to go 1.2 to 1.4 miles an hour always. Some days, you know, you wanna pay attention to that. Seems, oh, there he is. He just bit on that left rod. Oh, he popped off. Oh, what a stinker. Just Give that a minute, maybe he'll come back. <laughs> maybe he'll come back, but guys, um, having a little wider Dodger, what it's gonna do is it gives it a wider range that it's productive at. So if the wind is blowing, you're having to move around boats, you're kind of like, you know, you're not necessarily the best at trolling nice and steady. Um, having the wider blade Dodgers are gonna work better for you. They produce a larger thump, and honestly, just over the years, I really prefer just these wider bodied Dodgers for kokanee fishing. It's gonna add a lot of action uh, to your lure as well. And now for the business end guys, winter kokanee fishing usually means for me using small presentations, small size Yakima bait spin and glow there, or even like just a small tiny size one spinner blade. Um, you know, I do like using the Brad's kokanee cut plugs, but that's for me when the water temps start getting upper into the upper 40s, lower 50s and beyond. Um, having that little bigger presentation back there it seems to rile the kokanee up and tries to you know, honestly gets a few more strikes than some of the smaller stuff does but that's at the warmer temperatures for this lake so that's why I'm not using them today but they are in my arsenal always I would use the Brad's kokanee cut plug on a little larger leader but as you can see here for this little stuff I've only got about a 9 10 inch leader from the back of that dodger because I want this dodger as it's swinging side to side it's gonna be kicking and moving that whole setup just a little bit more to try to entice a couple more strikes out of the kokanee. Double, double, double. We've got a double, we've got a double. Come on boys, come on boys. <laughs> We're just totally. It's like the first two is hitting like. Double, pull the line up. All right, look at that guys. Look at that double. Look at the dub. The dub. We got a nice batch for the smoker now. But now I gotta undo the nest that these guys made. Oh my goodness. That just literally doubled our catch. Oh, a double. That's not very good. <laughs> All right guys, boom. Double coconuts. Smoked candy kokanee with maple freaking sugar gonna be the secret ingredient today. Those are nice size though. How's that first one we got? Like I said guys, these are really, I think we're gonna have a big fish year up here, which I'm really excited about because it's been a few years that the fish have been really small up here. So one thing also, another little tip, got that kokanee slime, that fresh kokanee slime. Grab them Dodgers, boys. That was a little tip Bill Herzog I read like 20 years ago. And honestly, if you got slime on your hands, you might as well do it. Oh, there you go, there you go, fish, fish, fish. Fish, 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 fish. Oh, he's burying that nine footer. There he goes. Easy, 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 easy. Don't get pulled in the water. Go ahead and start working me now. You're good now. He's really giving you the business. We get this fish and I feel like we've got our we've got our mission complete. We were going for 10, but it is. Typical winter kokanee day when it's really tough on a cold front can be real scratchy. Some days you come up here and get 40 like that. Some days they do this. Right there. Keep going there, boy. The biggest coconut in the lake. We got him, we got him, we got him, guys. Oh. Oh. Whoa, it's like a five pounder. <laughs> nice one, dude. Now we got batch coconut. All right, guys, we're going to get into the secret kokanee tackle box right now, which is a total joke, but either way, I'm going to give you guys a quick sneak peek here because this is kind of like what I like to go and show up to the lake with. I've got an assortment of different hoochies here. Um, I've got an assortment of different smile blades um, that will honestly fish well by themselves or uh, on the top of one of these hoochies here. Small dick knights, an assortment of beads. And then of course, like we were talking about earlier, the Brad's Kokanee Cut Plugs. 
Um, every day, oh, and then of course the spinning goals, which is what I'm using today. These spinners were just for trout for casting off the bank for the kids. Um, these, having all these different presentation sizes is really important because you know, a lot of guys will get really lost and really hung up on certain colors and they're only, like, they will only buy it an orange hoochie or whatever it is for that day, but that's probably all they're fishing. As you can see here, I've got a multitude of different colors, different spinners, um, different stuff. So throw at them, let the fish tell you what they like, but don't be afraid to like kind of get out of this notion that they'll only bite like one color on one day. I would more or less lean to like the size of the presentation first and I would change that kind of back and forth before I get hung up on the fact that they're only gonna bite an orange hoochie for that day. All right guys, so we removed the guts from those and we're gonna continue the process at home, but I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm really impressed with the size this year. I do a lot of these kokanee trips, but in March, April, and May when the fishing is honestly a lot better and the fish are gonna grow by then. So if you're looking for a kokanee trip, hit me up. But this is gonna be a really uh, nice sized batch of fish to go home and try some of that uh, maple sugar and to give this uh, kokanee, or turn this kokanee into kokanee candy. So let's get out of here, it is pouring frickin' rain and we're, I'm over this. <laughs> okay, so we're back in the kitchen after that slow day and what I gotta do now is I'm gonna do a real quick filet job. You guys have seen me do this in some of the other kokanee smoking episodes that you guys can search up on the YouTube channel if you wanna check those out for the regular four to one brown sugar to salt recipe. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our bag of kokanee, do a real quick filet job and prep those for the brining process. Kokanee fillets are done right there. And as you guys can see here, instead, I'm gonna substitute the brown sugar for the maple sugar. I've heard that this stuff is absolutely excellent. And I heard that it gives a very candied sweet texture to the fish. So we're gonna brine this thing for about 18 hours and smoke it tomorrow. I'm gonna to start with a four to one ratio, maybe probably mix it a little heavier to the sugar because um, the kokanee really does take the salt. Uh, very easily and if you do a little bit too much you get really salty fish so maybe more four to one five to one um, on that maple sugar to the salt and I'm gonna brine uh, all these up and coat it in that dry brine uh, to where uh, they're not gonna be able to see any of the fish if I don't know how much I'm gonna use I'm just gonna go four to one on my measuring cup here and see if that's enough and then mix some more if I need one, two, three, four. This stuff smells amazing. And one. That's all we're going with for the moment. Mix that up. Now I'm going to start sprinkling on the fish. Oh, well, then no, might, if he doesn't like syrup on his pancakes, he's probably not going to like this. Oh, come on. I do. There we go. I'll do one more mix up in here. All right, do a little. Ooh, boy. All right, guys, I hope that that looks and I can tell you it smells wonderful. I'm going to cover it and I'm going to refrigerate it while it's doing the curing process because you don't want to let stuff just get warm and nasty. Uh, you know, in a warm garage or sitting on your kitchen counter. So it's going to cover. It's going to go into the outside fridge and I'll see it tomorrow morning.
Okay, so on the Traeger they go. I'm going to put a light coating of that uh, maple sugar just on top of them just to let them cook. And then I'm going to let these things go for about three hours at 165 degrees. Obviously, your guys' smoker um, might be different than mine, but like these real thin fillets when it comes to kokanee, you got to be real careful. Um, you can overdo it really quick. So um, we also want to make sure that the temperature always gets through all the meat um, and gets to that 100 and you know, 61, 60, 65 degrees to make sure that it, uh, it's preserved right uh, and it's going to be, you know, consistently safe to eat. So in they go. Um, I'm going to come back in about three hours and check out the results, but uh, we'll sprinkle a little bit more on these and see how it goes. Just a real light dusting because we're making some candied He's dried for about a couple hours in the garage under a fan, so you can see that, that it's not absorbing right into the meat that way. And I think that's gonna do it. So we're just gonna let her ride. Okay guys, there it is, removed from the smoker. I've got Riley and Layden here in the video, and Misty Moo, hey Misty Moo. And uh, they're gonna try, I'm gonna make them try the fish first, so. All right, bust a piece out. Go for it. Just take a chunk, peel it off the skin. There's little bones in it, so just kind of be careful. Don't go too crazy. There you go. What's the word? What's the verdict? Real facial expressions. Is it good? Is it yeah, sweet? it's good. What do you think, oh, Riley? Really good. It doesn't Are, add. You don't have to say it's really good for the video because I'm gonna I'm gonna give a critique of it in a minute. It's really good. That's Why good. do I think you're lying? I'm not. All right. Okay, let's be real. What is okay. That? It just okay, I'm gonna weird. try here, Paisley. Hold on a second. What is that? It's smoked fish. You don't want it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't like. All right. Here we go. I can tell you, like, the fish came out like perfect, like as far as the. I don't know if you guys can see that. As far as like the consistency, letting it dry, it's got a nice seal on it, but. Needs more brine time. But you can taste the maple, you can taste the sugar. Definitely like not as strong as I thought it would be because you can really smell it when you were putting it together. But one thing for sure, um, super good quality. The texture, everything is like, like perfect. These are gonna be some awesome treats for the guys uh, for the next couple days in my guide boat. But uh, yeah, um, honestly, I'd make it go a little longer and maybe even mix it with a little brown sugar too at the end. So, all right. Well, it's wintertime kokanee fishing. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. And as always, uh, we'll see you on the next one. Later.